Hey guys, and welcome to game number 36 out of 100 of my Human vs. AI series, where I'm taking on the AI-powered Scrabblebot best spot in a 100 game match. We're currently at 15 wins, 20 losses, so 5 games behind the bot, and definitely don't want to fall 6 back, so really hoping for a win today. I'm first, and I think Boxy has to be the play here. I've got... yeah, I definitely want to get rid of most, if not all, of these high point constants, and I don't think I have a way to get the X on the double letter. So yeah, Boxy for 32, keeping EIS seems pretty solid. Let's go ahead and play it. And I get a little bit of a Val Heavy draw here, unfortunately. Don't think I'm going to be able to bingo, which is too bad. Bot plays web pretty quickly. Probably going to just try to fish off an O and an E here. I mean, I can't really score a lot. I have anything with RA? Probably Riot. Leave is dreadful, though. So yeah, I think just OE here is fine. I mean, it doesn't score a ton of points. It's 14. It's 11 fewer than Riot, but the Leave is so much better. I mean, this is a fantastic Leave. I can hit something with Webs. I can hit something with Bows. So if I draw a Bingo, it should be able to play. This doesn't really give all that much back to the bot either. So that looks pretty good. And that's exactly what we wanted. I've got... The Trezic, Steric, Raceus, and Criste got four seven leather bingos. Uh, so interestingly, none of them ended in an S, so I can't play with webs. I can play Raceus over here. That's 83. So that's probably going to be my highest scoring bingo. Of course, it could very much depend on what best bot plays as well. But if, say, the bot were to exchange, I guess, in the position where as is then that would be my highest scoring bingo at 83. Steric would play here, that's 74, so it's nine fewer, but it doesn't put that T in the middle of the triple triple line, which is a little bit scary. So, okay, Vortex, interesting. What does that change, if anything? Uh, erratics through the R, which plays, but it's not a double-double, so it's 70, it's not that exciting. Eroticas plays for 72. Don't really want to give back the C column, though, like that. It's a little bit dangerous. I don't think there's anything through the V. Like I said, nothing with webs. Raceus is now blocked. So, yes, Steric, still an option. Might be my best bet. 74. So that's the highest scoring thing I see so far. Is there anything with multiple overlaps with woes? So a Trezic, B-O-E isn't good. Steric, Raceus, and... Uh, oh, Christe, yeah, B-O-I is only good in Collins. So... All right, I think Steric is... Fine. I don't really think Erratics is materially better positionally. I mean, it's probably slightly more defensive, but not materially. And I think it's a little early to be sacrificing four points for such marginal differences. So, yeah. All right. Steric it is. It's an adjective. It does not take an S. Oh, there we go. That's a nice draw. <laughs> Nutria plus a blank. So definitely another bingo is coming. Just a matter of what. Do I have double doubles through this R? Urinator, not a double double. It's not the easiest place to hit a double double, I don't think. Two R's and a U is a little bit awkward. Yeah, I don't. The pro terrain, no, that doesn't work. Uh, don't think so. Gog comes down for the bot. Ooh, almost anti-quark. That's a nine. So if I can't double-double through the... I mean, I have a million bingos, right? Like, I mean, I can play something like Duration. 66, not very exciting. I, I don't really want to play Nutrias and put an N there. It's only 70. I mean, it's not that many more points. Nutrias with Gox is an option as well. That's 70. It's actually not that risky, to be honest. I mean, I'm not too worried about a U here. Normally, I don't like putting vowels next to these bonus squares, but really the only thing that goes... I guess there are two H's, two M's, and two P's all unseen, so it could give back a bit, but there's not going to be a disaster scenario. And this R, again, is not that risky because, I mean, he can't really start with, like, a Z or anything there. And it does take out the Gox line as well as Gawky and possible underlaps under the K, so it has some defensive merit. I think that's... Unless I can find the 8 through the K or double-double through the R... I have plays through this eye, like Rain Suit, but they're pretty weak. Uranitic. I mean, Uranitic isn't actually horrible. 68. Yeah, I don't want to put the A there. Like, that's much riskier. It could have Kate or Cotty for 72. I mean, something like Zaps. Yeah, that's definitely not a good play. 
Urinator here is also playable for 68. I think Nutrias and Gox is still the best I've seen so far. But yeah, let me just make sure I'm not missing a double-double. Going through the alphabet here in my head a little bit. Something with an E. I'm also looking through this K. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Anti-something? No. Rainout doesn't really go anywhere particularly good. Puritan. Quintop is blank Q. Quarter doesn't work. Yeah, all right. I'm not seeing anything better. Let's just play Nutrias and Gox. Hopefully I didn't miss something. Injurers. Oh, the eye's not in the right spot. Uh, ah, dang. <laughs> Injurer fits, but not Injurers. Uh, we have to be aware Interval takes an E for Intervale, so that's something to watch out for. Could play Injurer. Jarrell is probably best. Uh, whoops. There we go. 40 points. Keeps NRS. Yeah, I'm going to give back some easy 30, 40-point plays from the J, but, I mean, there's no disaster potential there, really. The odds of him triple-tripling through the J are astronomically small. This is considerably better than Injurer, I think. I mean, Injurer's not terrible, honestly, though. It's 28, so it's 12 points less. Turns over some more tiles for the blank. Yeah, I don't know. It might actually be close. Because it does probably give back... Although, Jarell takes out the... There's so many E's with the interval hook there. I think Jarell is fine. Takes out that hook. Still have a pretty good lead. I think I'd rather stop bingos, at, even at the expense of giving back easy J plays. Yeah, I think I prefer Jarell here. That's another nice draw. Or Pines. Uh, is he going to play? Overspin. Um, oh, Incorpse. Incorpse Conspire. So Incorpse is going to play. It's uh, extremely, extremely volatile between the I next to this triple word and the E in the middle of these two triple words. If it's the only bingo, then it's the only bingo. I'm going to play it, but I would much rather find another option. That being said, I'm not sure there is another option, at least as it currently stands. It's not, I don't think it's going to be worth playing Join. If I were up a lot more, maybe, but I mean, I'm not. Oh, wait, no, there is another option. I have Repianos. Yeah, no, I do have that. Okay, that's way better. For some reason, I, I don't know why. Sometimes I have a hard time seeing the word Repiano. It's a fairly high prop. It's like a high prop 7. They're all good letters, but it just, it doesn't come up that often. It doesn't come up as often as you'd think. And uh, I think because of that, I just don't, it doesn't come up that much, and I, I don't get to play it that often, and I, I've definitely missed it before. But luckily, I, I almost missed it, but I didn't miss it here. Uh, is there anything through the Y? No, I don't think so. So, all right, yeah, Repi knows it is. 78 points doesn't give back all of those things that Incorpse does. It could give back a big Z play potentially through this I, but, I mean, I'm not going to sacrifice 17 points to play it through the I in Interval because of that, so... All right, a little bit of a Val Heavy draw. Well, actually, a lot of a Val Heavy draw. This is a, this is a bad rack. Jihu, if that stays open, it doesn't stay open. Oh, I guess I wait a minute. Do I have? I probably have some stuff here. I, mean, I have hair. Do I have um, anything with Ken or Kin? That would be really nice if I can get something there. Uh. So this has to be, well, this could be an, oh, Hyrie. Oh, look at this play, guys. 59. Oh, that's sick. I mean, that's way better than Jihu, even if it stays open. Way better. Gets sort of an extra vowel, and it scores 17 more points. That's a sick play right there. Hopefully it'll stay open. Man, 59 points with this garbage? That would be pretty nice. Not every day you score 59 points with six vowels on your rack. So hopefully that stays open, but yeah, worst case, like I said, I have Jihu, which is a pretty good backup. I mean, with, with a rack like this to have a 59-point play and a 42-point play, you can't really ask for much more. I mean, there's a lot of boards where with a rack like this, you'd be lucky to not exchange. And well, I mean, now there's a bunch of triple-triples open, but I am i don't think I'm up enough still to justify sacrificing. I, I mean, I could play Maho and block this M, but I'm just giving up such a massive amount of equity over Hyrie. And I mean, if I were up 200, then sure, but... I mean, I'll be up 100. The bot could easily hit a Z play and bingo. There's plenty of paths for the bot to win. High raise the play. Take the 59 points and try to run away with this. Judo next turn most likely will come down. Although, I might consider mold now, given the size of my lead if the bot doesn't bingo. Because at this point, 
it's getting tougher to imagine losing without the bot triple tripling, so might be worth considering playing mold. I mean, could the bot triple triple through the J? Sure. I mean, like reinject. There, there are words, but it's a heck of a lot harder to triple triple through a J than triple triple through an M. So if you're playing the odds, then I'm definitely better off playing mold than judo if my sole objective is to minimize the chance of a triple triple, which it very well might be at this point in the game. But like I said, we'll see what the bot does here. If the bot bingos or scores a lot, then I'll probably want to try to keep the scoring pressure on and play judo. If the bot fishes, plays for a few points, and probably mold is the prudent play at, uh, at this point in the game. Mold is 24, judo is 36. So 12 point sacrifice, which is a lot. I mean, it's nothing to scoff at. 12 is a lot of points, but I think given the size of my lead, probably going to be prudent to do that. But like I said, just sort of waiting to see what the bot does. And we will go from there. But like before, it's nice to have two pretty reasonable options. I feel confident if the bot was going to triple-triple, it would have by now. But you never know. That would be a pretty epic slow roll. We've seen some pretty shocking slow rolls from the bot before. But, I mean, to have a triple-triple and then wait two-plus minutes to play it. All right, the bot plays Fjord for 48. So this is interesting to think. I mean, Mold is almost certainly the play. But, like, it's just interesting to think about. The bot made a good play, 48 points to the J, and it took a while. Like, I mean, it took two minutes to play that. Like, that seems, that feels like a play that with most racks should be fairly obvious. What I'm wondering, guys, is if the bot had the blank and could have played bingos for, like, 80 or something and was debating whether to bingo or play Fjord. Like, the fact, like, I know if I were playing a human and the human took that long to play Fjord, I mean, against the human, I might think it's maybe not that easy to see with the FJ star. I've definitely missed it before, before. Um, I almost said Befjord. That's funny. Uh, I've definitely missed it before. And I would be thinking, okay, maybe they just didn't see it. And then we're like, oh, later on and, and found it. And that's why they took two minutes. Against Best Spot, it's not like Best Spot's not going to see Fjord immediately. And I tend to, you know, play against Best Spot inference-wise similarly to I would how I would against a, a top human player, I think. And in general, I would expect that if if a top human player saw Fjord instantly and took that long to play it, probably have the blank, just because it seems tough for, for that to be not the standout play unless you have the blank. I mean, maybe they had the Q, and they, they either have the blank, either I think the bot has the blank, or the bot has absolute garbage, like the Q or three eyes or something. Um, either way, I think mold has to be the play, right? Especially if I think there's an increased chance that it has the blank. So, I'm going to stick to the plan. All right, well, I don't draw the blank, so, I mean, maybe the bot has it, or maybe it's still in the back. We'll see. I'm definitely bracing for the bot to bingo. Well, there's your answer, guys. The bot didn't have the blank, so I was wrong. Well, so much for all of that. And, uh, yeah, that's not great because now I have to worry with the blank still unseen. My, my lead is not that safe. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I've got this D to worry about. I've got this A and Agnation, potentially even the Y. There's... It's going to be tough to probably block all of the bingo lines, so I should probably try to focus on outrunning, scoring as much as I can. Dated probably does the best job of that. I like leaving five in the bag, too, because then if the bot were to bingo now, that's pretty good timing for the end game. Since if the bot has five tiles, it's not all that likely of an outplay, especially if there's a bunch of Drek unseen. You have to watch out for the Q. Q could actually be a big factor here. But also, like I said, the good thing is if I can dodge the Q... Then if the bot bingos and draws it, it probably loses. I mean, I could also, maybe, I, you know what, maybe I should do? Maybe I should play Da to minimize my chances of drawing the Q. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, leaving 8 in the bag. Well, then the problem is if the bot bingos, it doesn't empty the bag, which is probably less ideal. But I think minimizing my chances at drawing the Q and also saving Cot if I do draw it is nice. I could also even bingo here and just completely pretty much end the game on the spot. <sighs> Tough call. So yeah, Dawes 17, Dated is 25, 8 fewer points. I mean, Dated does also give me more... It's sort of a double-edged sword here, because turning over tiles gives me more chances at the blank. The Z is also a very good tile here, I would imagine, for, for scoring most likely. But it also gives me more chances at the dreaded Q. So how do I balance that? I do think leaving 5 in the bag is better than 8. Dated also maybe blocks some bingos on the top. Or through this N. So I feel like Dated is better. Like, my leave doesn't matter all that much. Like, I don't need to bingo here. 
I more need to try to outscore the bot. And I think, yeah, I mean, if I draw like Q, I should still be fine as long as the bot doesn't bingo. Like probably after data, I only lose if the bot bingos and I draw the Q. I mean, after da, yeah, I mean, like if the bot has the Q, then they could also just play QI. Like see, data starts closing the board down more. So if the bot has to play FQI, I can really start playing some more defense. So I feel like I'm leaning towards dated right now. But yeah, those eight points feel like they're gonna matter. I mean, I'm not up that much. I'm up 44, like. Hmm, tough turn, very tough turn. My first instinct was dated and that's sort of what I'm still leaning towards. And you, usually in these kind of positions, I feel like if you overthink it, you often end up making a play that's not your first instinct, that's uh, that's not the right play. Often you have a first instinct for a reason. Yeah, drawing the Q would really suck though, like, I mean, especially if I don't draw an I, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. Huh. Yeah, this is a tough turn. I mean, Dot does keep a really nice leave. Hmm. I really don't want to get that Q because I, I also it's even if I can play it's going to be a liability to have to deal with it. Yeah, I mean I don't think leaving eight in the bag versus five is that big a deal. Like one in the bag pre end game is still fairly tractable. Like I should still be able to out in two pretty easily. You know what? I think I'm going to play Da. Like I really want to avoid this Q. Well, I did avoid the Q, and I drew Sedates, so that's good. Uh, let's see, hold on. Um, Dearests, Asserted, no. I don't think Sedates will play, but that's okay. Probably just play Hide or something next turn, block the D score a little bit. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, Standees Ascended. No, neither of those fit. Yeah, a lot's going to depend on what the bot does here. Yeah, Sensated also, but... None of them play. Hmm... Yeah, I mean, uh, one thing is I can't really score a lot of points, and I, I don't think I'm really at risk of losing if the bot doesn't bingo, but maybe I do need to watch out for that a little bit. If I can get down high, that should score enough to alleviate any of those concerns, and it plays Hom, so it does block a little bit, which is not bad for me. I think still hide, I mean... Or, yeah, hide, or, it doesn't really matter which way I play it, I don't think, with the DE or the ED. Yes, I block the D, which is good. I only play off two tiles, so relatively small chance of drawing the Q, and I have Cot on my rack. I mean, I don't even know where Cot's going to play. I guess I'll play through this A. Yeah, I mean, I, I need to score points. Like, I, I can't just stop scoring points. So with the Z and the Q on scene, I, I need to I need points. And this leaves four in the bag, which is good. So if the bot plays, like, a big play here... Or something on the L column. Yeah, I guess there's stuff like Capiz that's threatened too. That could be annoying. Huh. There's a lot more poison in this position, so to speak, than I think I gave it credit for at first. I still feel like this has to be the play, though. I, I need the points. Don't give me the Q. Good. The P is a good tile to get to, so now I don't have to worry about Capiz. I mean, you could have the blank and play it, but I probably can outrun that. Or Hafiz. It's like 72. Yeah, I should be able to outrun that. I have Pesetas. Play Zin. Well. I mean, I just play Pause. If I draw the Q. So, okay, if I draw the Q, I mean, well, the bot could bingo out, though. Huh. I mean, if the bot doesn't bingo out, do I win? Probably. Because, yeah, if I, if, even if I draw the Q, I have QI and COT. So, wait a minute. 
Oh, no, I thought I had stapedes for a second, but Styrix is not a word. Uh, yeah, pesetas. I mean, see, I I'm just worried that... Yeah, there are a lot of bingo threats here. I, I do just worry that if I block, I could get outscored. I mean, like, let's say I play says. Could bingo through this A. It's a lot harder, though. So I, I still have pause, which is nice, actually. If I draw the Q, then do I have problems? Because I just blocked QI. That's the thing. Like, the bot didn't have the Q with Zin, surely. It would have played QI. So there's a 50-50 chance I'm drawing the Q. Yeah, see, I can't do this, because... At the same time, if I draw the Q, the bot is kind of likely to have a bingo up there. Huh, so how do I block that without... See, I have to be very careful with this, because I could give back, like, Fakir or a massive play. PE? I mean, sort of blocks. You could still start with an A. I like saving pause. So... I mean, does he have any, like, huge plays? I guess he can see like, qualify. But I think if he gets, like, qualify, say, with a blank Y, I doubt he can get the Q on the triple letter. Seems tough to do. All Fakwi doesn't fit. Like, if I can save pause for 37, then, I mean, qualify is what? 13, 14, 52. Yeah, I should outrun that easily. If I can score something... So I guess I need to think about, yeah, if I, if I draw the Q, well, if I draw the Q, then the good thing is, if he can't bingo, he probably can't score a ton. How about, uh, no, I can't do send, that gives back equals and stuff. Send, yeah, or sent, unfortunately. That doesn't seem prudent, and yeah, S gives back hooks, huh. T-E-S, maybe? Weird-looking play, but... Oh, but then I get rid of my T for Kai, and I can't do that either. See, I need to just play, like, ES. But I don't think I can play it there. I can't do... Yeah, I can't even... Yeah, I don't want to give back equals, right? That doesn't seem like a good idea. Ah, Annoying turn. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I can overcome a Q stick, most likely, if I play says and then draw the Q. And there's definitely no other spot for it. Still have a little bit of time. Yeah, I don't think ES is really an option. What if I put off one tile somewhere? So that if the bot bingos, then maybe it'll draw the Q. Maybe? What, I can't pass. No, because also if I pass, then the bot, the bot can fish off the Q if I pass. I don't really want that. So, hey, what if I play one and save pause? Like, what if I... I mean, what if I try to block a little bit, though? Um, with what, though? How about this? I know this is a stupid looking play, but like, actually? You know what? Like, I don't actually think it's that bad. It's a wild looking play, I know that. I mean, if the bot plays, like, just QI and fishes, I think I, I don't think it can bingo through that A. It's, it seems tough. If I draw the Q, then yeah, I still have QI and COD, I should be fine. It stops a lot of bingos, like, I mean, Uniface, Unseal, there's a lot of, there's a healthy number of bingos the bot could have. I could also play PST, it doesn't, but then I, I also like, no, because then if I draw the Q, I'm stuck with it again in a lot of cases. I, honestly, I, I know this looks stupid, but I, I think, I mean, yeah, because like I said, I save pause for a lot, that should outrun qualify in a lot of cases. 
I'm I'm pretty sure. So, I mean, that would put me up, yeah, like 27. I'm going to do it. Interesting. Okay. Well, I think if the Q is in the bag, well, I definitely blocked unseals. I don't think there's anything through this A. I was looking at that before. Dulciana. Was in the, I guess could the bot bingo with the Q, though, actually, through that A. I didn't think about that. Hmm. Not easily. Quaint. Shoot, I'm down to a little over a minute. Yeah, it took a while there. Alright, well, I still have pause. Should start thinking about what other options I have. I'm up 40. It's a decent lead. Yeah, pause is a lot. Saves fed, which will go out. Uh, most likely. Have anything here? I mean, I can probably even just play like this and then go out somewhere. Hmm. Or Fa, maybe? And then... Well, I don't know what else. I mean, I can play like Repast and Fe, maybe. F here, possibly, to block, too, is not a bad play. Saving Pause, maybe? And Paste it as an out. That's not bad. It's going to depend a lot on what the bot does. Yeah, I mean, okay, so is there... Do I feel confident there's nothing? It's almost like Involucra or something here, too. There's no room to play through this D. So yeah, Dulciana... D-E-F... Oh, shoot, there's a Colleen. Yeah, I forgot about that. Shoot. So yeah, if the bot plays a Colleen, then I lose because I'll have Q two Q spots. Yeesh. Well, that's only going to happen if the Q is in the bag, which it might not be. Huh? Yeah, that might make my play a mistake. Then, not sure. Yeah, I missed a calling before. The blank E. So much to consider in that position. I mean, I still definitely... I, of course, I didn't know the F was in the bag. Blocked some stuff over there. I mean, should I play SI then or something to block the extra Q spot? I don't even know. That would have been crazy. Maybe I'm supposed to play SI. But then the problem is, though, again, I could draw the Q and then be screwed. Like, there's at least a 50-50 chance I was going to draw the Q, I felt like. These positions are so hard when it's like... Whoa. I did not see that coming. So it's got... I think pause will win, because it's got... Um, Quay? Wait, does it win? Hold up. It's got quad here, too. Pause is 37. Quay is 26. It gets... I think I win by one. Unless I'm missing a better out. What? Wait, Quay is 26, so that's 11 plus 12. Yeah, I win by one if quad is his best out. I mean, wow, what a freaking game. Goodness gracious. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was, uh, that was a heck of a game, guys. I mean, I was, I could probably spend an hour going over some of those positions. I don't know if I want to spend that long, but yeah, we have a lot to talk about here. <laughs> So what, I'm just curious, what did the bot have with Quanic? Did it, okay, so it did have the Q. So did it have a tile it could have won with? I don't know. What, I think we're going to need a lot of time for the end game. Let's go through the earlier part of the game and then quickly and then focus on that. So yeah, Boxy looks good. Wow, web keeping. Yeah, I guess that's worth it. I mean, you score 31 points. Yeah, best bot dealing with some garbage early on in this game, but it plows through it nicely. 
Oh, unitary. That's uh, I didn't think about making the blank the y. Yeah, that's a little better positionally, I think, because it. Uh, yeah, the R is a little easier to play through than the T, and it doesn't put the vowels there. So not a huge mistake, but definitely a slight imprecision. Those kind of things definitely add up. Yep, so far this looks good. Yeah, Ripieno is clearly correct. Gremlin Mingler. Neither of them play for the bot. Yeah, Hyre was a really nice play. And what I, oh, interesting. So the, wow, the bot flipped. Kept AAI, and it thought for that long. Interesting. I guess Zhao. Well, I was sort of right. I figured either I had the blank or garbage. I just thought the garbage would be worse than AAI. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's not completely obvious, right? Like, ADRF is a much better lead than AAI. Wow, so the bot was down 140 at this point. I won the game by one. See, so a mold, agnation. Oh, man, this turn. I spent a long time here. Yeah, it was Da versus Dated the whole way. And, like I said, I mean... Those eight points after dated, I mean, they could have definitely helped me. As we saw, it was very close. But I just, I really was scared of drawing that Q. And potentially without drawing the U. Or even if I drew like an I for QI, I just, I, I was going to cause me a lot of loss and flexibility. And I really wanted the bot to end up drawing the Q. So yeah, I don't know. I don't even know how to know what's correct here. I guess I could put it into Quackle. I'm not even sure I have confidence that Quackle would get this right. This is such a complicated position. Like... I feel like, guys, these are the hardest positions to solve in the endgame, or, or pre-endgame, when there's a lot of really good stuff in the pool and a lot of really bad stuff at the same time. Like, when there's a ton of really good stuff, it's sort of obvious. You want to turn over tiles as much as you can and get the good stuff. When there's a bunch of bad stuff, it's sort of really obvious. You want to play as few tiles as you can so you avoid the Q or the Vs or whatever the bad stuff is in there. When there's both, it's sort of like, I mean, turnover is it a good thing. Well, it is both a good thing and a bad thing, but is it more of a good thing or more of a bad thing? And it's very hard to know here, right? There's a blank. The yes, I don't care about that much. I already have an S, and I mean, this is not a board that with Styrix not being valid, there aren't a ton of big S hooks here. The S isn't such a big deal, but the Q is a, is a very big deal in terms of being bad. The blank is a very big deal in terms of being good. And the Z could definitely be potentially an asset too for scoring some points. So, yeah, I don't know. I think my play is reasonable though. I mean, like I said, I don't need to bingo. I mostly need to try to counter if the bot bingos. And I figured, too, then if the bot bingos has a better chance at drawing the Q. I don't know. Hum for the bot. Wow, hum instead of him? Why? That's a fascinating decision. There's got to be some reason. Why did the bot play hum instead of him? Normally, and it's not like there's tons of O's left. There's, it's the last O. You're duplicating your I. Is it going for something? I mean, it doesn't increase the chances of hitting Capiz. Either way, you have an I for QI. Is it like thinking it's going to play QI and then Zin or something? Maybe he just wants the extra I for the Q flexibility? I don't even know. That's a... I don't know, but with, but with an, this draw, you save the possibility of a Zonic, too, here with a C draw. I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm having a hard time grasping this one, guys. Why... Why did it not play him through the same exact score? It's like the same exact thing positionally that keeps to me what seems like just a, a plain old better leave. Is there something I'm missing that the bot was trying to hit? I I don't know. This is confusing to me, this one. So if, if any of you guys have any explanation for why you think the bot might have played Hum instead of him, definitely let me know in the comment section because I'm a little bit stumped. I'm sure there was a reason. This bot is definitely not stupid, but I just don't know what the reason was. Um, oh, I didn't consider Ed's. That's, that's a, that's a play. Yeah, that's not bad, to be honest. I mean, scores, well, I still think I like playing one fewer tile. I didn't actually consider that spot later on, which maybe I should have, uh, in the, in the end game. Yeah, would F's have been better instead of pause? I'm not sure. It might have been. But, um, yeah, I think I want to turn over fewer tiles again. At this point, the Q is really... Blueing large. And wow, so the bot elects not to play Capiz or Azonic. Let's look at this. Interesting. I would have had to, I mean, to me, I guess it figured it's trying to bingo. Wow, that's tough to pass up. 74 puts you up 20. Huh. I mean, yeah, it's just like, this is intractable, right? I mean, for a human almost, there's so many, you, you can't, with any amount of time, you can't manually manually go through every draw. With four in the bag, that's 11 choose four, which is, uh, I mean, what even is that? Is that 720, I think, or something like that? It's a massive, massive number of possibilities to, to go through, right? Well, let's see. It's not, no, it's not quite 7, 
20, I don't think. It's 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 over 12. So it's 11 times 10 times uh, 3 times 2. Yeah, it is 720. It is 720, right? Or uh, 660, right? 660. I believe it's 660 if my, uh, my math is correct there. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's 660 possibilities to go through. I mean, that's just uh, that's just impossible. Uh, actually, correction, guys, it's 330. I must have forgotten the factor of two of my head apologies for that. I just checked it uh, with the calculator, and I was off. So it's 330 possibilities, so not quite as many as I thought. But uh, that being said, still a heck of a lot of possibilities to go through by hand, especially uh, most of these endgames are going to be very non-trivial. So, yeah, I mean, I guess just in terms of general thoughts on the endgame here, right? So you're going to have five tiles. I'll have seven. If you draw the Q... You do have two spots for QI, but if I can go out in two, I probably have enough 20. I guess that's the thing. It's If I have the Q, I could have problems. It's probably going to just come down to who gets the Q. Like, I feel like this game is was ultimately, for the most part, just going to come down to who got the Q in a lot of respects. And the bot almost definitely can't win if it gets the Q. I mean, it almost won with the Q, but... Yeah, I mean, Zen, again, minimize the chances of drawing the Q, right? The fewer tiles you play, the fewer chances you have to draw the Q. Capiz doesn't seem better than that. I think Azonic is just flat out better than Capiz, right? If you don't have seven tiles in the endgame, it's much harder to play out quickly than if you have five tiles. So yeah, Azonic is certainly better than Capiz, I would imagine. Yeah, Zen versus Azonic. Tough to give up 50 points, but I guess the bot just didn't feel it had that much of a chance in the endgame. So what would have happened? So I had... Uh, um, so it would have drawn FLQU. Yeah, that's almost certainly a loss. It would have IQLUF... Yeah, it should have been a pretty. That would have been a pretty easy one for me, I think. I mean, it doesn't. It would have quail, but I mean, I would just need the forty point out in two. Yeah, I just play pause again. So I guess I just figured I go out in two and win quite a lot. It's it probably this game is going to come down mostly to whether the bot gets the Q after Azonic. And I guess it felt it was more likely to get the Q and lose after Azonic than it was to uh, to lose after this, which is believable. And yet yeah, here, oh my gosh, this turn. I mean. What am I supposed to do? Again, this this is like almost impossible to permute. And I, I'm not going to put this into Quackle. Quackle is not going to get this right. With the Q and the blank, it, Quackle is notorious for getting these wrong with stick possibilities involved. Like, this is just brutal. I mean, I'm curious. So what are the possible bingos? Let's see. I'll check this on my phone. What are the possible bingos that Best Buck could have above Agnation and through the A? Because that's something that's easy to check. So A-C-F-I-L-N-Q-U blank. Sub anagram. All right. So on top, there's Alfaqui, which I saw anti flu or infule for that matter. So that, if I draw uh, CN, it bingos. CQ, it bingos. Canful, those don't fit. Incudal or inocula, many things there. Uniface. So yeah, there's only four draws, I guess, where it bingos up there. And then how about through another A? Uh, it might just be a Colleen. Fancy fool doesn't fit. Yeah, so it's just a Colleen through the A. So it's only, only if FQ is in the bag. And I guess FQ, no, it wasn't in the bag. The bot drew the Q. Yeah, I mean, the problem with Agnations, yeah, is if, if I draw the Q, well, if I draw the Q, like I said, I do at least have Cot and QI. And I, I still feel like if I draw the Q, I mean, I definitely did not see Hwanik. But if I draw the Q, I just don't think the bot can score enough. I'm still up 40 points. I mean, I guess Kalif is there. There's C-A-L-I-F. Huh. I didn't think about that. 36? So I'm only up 4. Yeah, actually, you know what? Now that I'm looking at this, I, I didn't see Kalif. That could be a problem. If I draw the Q, for sure, even if the bot doesn't bingo. Yeah, I probably, honestly, I probably lose the vast majority of the time if I draw the Q. If not almost all the time. But that's probably true regardless of what I play. I mean, because if I, yeah, I mean, if I, if I play pause immediately, I mean, maybe then I, I guess, you know what, though, maybe after pause, I probably do win if I draw the Q if the bot can't bingo, because then I go up so much and I have two Q spots. So I guess, yeah, pause probably just loses, what did I say, 4 out of 36 when the bot bingos. Maybe I should just do that. 
Because, you know what, I think I should have, because... Yeah, I think if the bot doesn't bingo, I should still win. After pause, even if I draw the Q. And if I think I... So what my odds of drawing the Q... If I play off one tile... Well, okay, so the bot... I know the bot didn't have the Q with Zin, right? Because it could have just played QI, and why wouldn't it get rid of the Q? So that means a 50-50 shot, the Q is still in the bag, because the bot drew two tiles out of a bag of four. If I play off one tile, that means I have a 50-50 shot at drawing a Q that's in the bag with a 50-50 shot, which means you score 50-50, you get 25%. So after Agnations, I'm 25% to draw the Q, which I feel like is pretty much going to lose... Not always. Like, if the bot doesn't have Caliph, then maybe it's not so straightforward, but... A lot of the time. And if I don't draw the Q, then unless the bot hits a calling, I feel like I usually win. Although I could run into problems after Caliph, too, to be honest. If the bot has QU blank, it might be able to outscore me, potentially. Maybe. I'm not sure. It's very complicated. Like if it's threatening quasi or something uh, to the ions in, right? Like if, say, it has CLIF QU blank or something, right? And then it's placed Caliph and then threatens quasi. I, I could potentially have some issues blocking that and, and winning the game. So, yeah, Ignatius may have been a little too cute. I mean, I, th I think this is one of those positions where I had to evaluate. Should I block the bingos on the second row, which only occur four out of 36 times? It's only one out of nine. That's not that much. Or should I just, you know, guarantee I win when the bot doesn't bingo? And I think here, I, I feel like I, in retrospect, I probably should have played pause. Like I said, I didn't think of Calif, C-A-L-A-F, through this A and Ignatian which is a pretty strong possibility uh, whether the bot has the Q or not. And that could pretty easily lead to me getting outscored after Agnations, I think. I didn't really appreciate that possibility because that gets the bot to within four. And if it has a strong out in its next turn, that I have a hard time blocking uh, and can outrun. I mean, pause is a lot, which is nice after Agnations. Like, you'd probably have to play Caliph and then Thread and Quasi. But, I mean, I, I still feel like I, I lose more often than not with the Q. And if I'm 25% to draw the Q, that's a lot more than 1 in 9. Like, I'm very confident that pause loses exactly 1 in 9. I, I don't see how I lose after pause, even if I draw the Q if the bot doesn't bingo. It doesn't seem possible. And we just established that the bot bingo's uh, 4 out of 36 draws. So pause should be a 32 out of 36 win. Agnations, yeah, I don't really know. I feel confident if I don't draw the Q, I usually win. I mean, but... Again, if it plays Caliph and draws that QUA blank, I could be in some trouble. So, I don't know. I, I could probably spend a long time on this. I don't want to bore you guys too much. And um, it's going to take me a long, long time to premiere all the possibilities. And I don't want to do it here, like I said. But fascinating position either way. My instinct is telling me I probably chose wrong. And, I mean, yeah, this is another position for the bot. I could probably spend an hour on here too, right? So... Not playing QI, which, I mean, that looks probably good, because even if it draws, like, an E, I guess it, well, does it not have two bingos if it draws an E? I mean, it has a call line. I guess the idea is if it draws a bingo through the A, it's just not that hard for me to block and then win, right? Even if it draws the S, I can just play top and then go out. Yeah, that makes sense. So I, I see why Q QI doesn't win. The question is, does Clonic ever actually win? Like, it drew the U, which is a pretty good outcome. If it drew the T for Ka, I don't think that really helps it. Yeah, well, we just saw if it drew the U, it lost by one. I don't think drawing the S will help. No, then it's actually just stuck. So does Klonik ever actually win? I don't think so. Because what would be better than drawing a U? I mean, the T gives you cut, but you're not going to go out. I, I think this might... I mean, I feel like best spot's supposed to be perfect with one in the bag. If Klonik never wins, I don't think QI here ever wins. Because like I said, it's not... I mean, if it draws an E, right, it doesn't have... It doesn't have anything on the top row, right? I doubt it. It would have to start with two vowels. Uh, no, it doesn't. Like I said, there's nothing through the D on the bottom. It's not going to fit. Probably nothing through the VR. No. See, so yeah, I guess I just, whatever it draws, there's just nothing it could have on the second row above Agnations. And that's part of why I played Agnations, right? To put the S there to make it hard for it to bingo. Because it can't start vowel consonant. So, 
But yeah, I guess maybe Best Bot amazingly just can't win here. And it plays Clonic to try to cut spread. And yeah, pause is my only win, it looks like. Because yeah, Fs would have lost... Well, yeah, and that's four worse because AP AEPT doubles to 12 S's EFT. So and that's four worse. That would have lost by three. Yeah, pause is my only win. And then Quay for 26. What a game. 479, 478. This was, I mean, probably the most intense and interesting and just complicated game of the series so far. I mean, it was... It was a great game. I think I think I played really well throughout. Nutrias was a little imprecise over Unitary. Ignatians might have been terrible. I don't even know. That's the beauty of this game here. Like, it might have been a great play. It might have been a terrible play. I feel like I feel like it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't optimal. That's what I, my instinct is telling me. But I just don't know. And that's honestly part of what I love about Scrabble, guys. You get these positions that even these top computers, like Quackle Championship player, can't solve them. And, I don't even know if Best Bot is solving them right. Like, even with two in the bag, it can just get so complicated that it's, you know, and we might never even know, like, what the best solution is. Like, is there an answer? Yes. But, I mean, just the computing power required to figure it out definitively is well beyond any human and maybe beyond any computer that exists now. Uh, I mean, Best Bot is probably the closest we have to it, and it's uh, it's certainly not perfect as we've seen before with two or more in the bag. So... Yeah, crazy, crazy game. Crazy game. But um, I think that's probably all I'll say for now. Uh, it's already a pretty long video, over 45 minutes, so I don't want to drone on too much. But uh, I do hope you guys enjoyed this game. I certainly enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I mean, obviously, I enjoyed it more because I won. I would have been very disappointed if I lost by one, especially being up 140 earlier. But even so, you got to just appreciate the uh, the intensity here. That was, that was a heck of a game. So, uh, yeah, like I said, very relieved to come away with the win in that in that end game, um, I, I think I played pretty well. Maybe I didn't. We we'll, might never know. But any thoughts, always welcome, uh, or feedback or anything like that. Um, and yeah, I don't know what else to say. So uh, I think I'll sign off with that. But, but yeah, thanks again for watching, guys. Really hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I'll see you soon for game number, uh, I guess what are we on now? 37 uh, is the next game. And hopefully that one will be just as exciting as this one. But it's going to be a tough act to follow. So. Until next time, guys, thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Hey, guys, thanks for watching the video. With the holiday season coming up, I wanted to remind you that I do offer Scrabble lessons, and they can make a really fun gift if you have a family member or friend who loves Scrabble and might be interested in learning about tournaments or just having a fun experience while getting a few tips on taking their game to the next level. If you might be interested, then click the image right here, which will take you to the lessons page of my website, which also has some additional information and reviews from past players who have given lessons. If you might be interested or have any further questions, feel free to contact me on my website or on my email, both of which I'll post in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys.